OpenAI just released a new agent builder, and some people are already calling this the NAN killer. Now, I don't think it's quite there yet, but I did do a quick test and I managed to build a GitHub PR code review agent that's pretty similar to what I would make on NAN, and honestly, there are some game-changing features in here, especially the widgets. But there's also a few small issues that stop me from absolutely loving this. You can find the agent builder on the OpenAI platform. As you can see, we can create our first workflow, or you can choose from the six templates that they've given you. In my case, I'll just load back into the GitHub code PR review agent that I created earlier. So you can see all of these interconnected nodes that I have, and we can zoom in on this, and it's your usual drag and drop interface that you expect from these platforms, similar to what we get in NAN and Zapier. On the left here, we have all of the nodes we're able to use. Agent is the one where you have a model and you give it a prompt to get some output. We have our tools down here like file search, guardrails, and MCP. MCP is obviously really cool as it means we can basically connect anything that we want into these workflows. Then you have your logic nodes, which just help you build out those complex workflows with multiple steps. Now, before I jump into actually showing you some of these individual nodes and how I've set up this workflow, let's quickly preview it so you can get some context for what this looks like when it's working. For my agent, all I need to do is send a prompt saying review and then the GitHub PR link. And if we hit enter here, we'll see it go through all of the individual steps that I had in my workflow. So it's currently on the guardrail step. It's gone through that. It's done the PR info extraction. It's gone through the if else block here. It's currently on the MCP server to actually get the details from GitHub. And now it's on the code review agent. This step will take a little bit of time since it's using GPT-5 and it goes through all of its reasoning. It also has web search and MCP servers connected to it as well. Once it is finished with the code review though, it goes into my final agent and this agent simply returns a widget. This widget down here, as you can see, is an interactive component that we can now have within our chats. And in my case, I just hooked it up so it shows a random meme based on the code review. Widgets are actually part of ChatKit, and that was another thing that they released. I'm working on a longer video so we can cover everything that came out there, so subscribe if you want to stay up to date on everything that OpenAI is doing. With the context of seeing this in action then, let's go through how it was set up and how all of the individual nodes work. In a workflow, we always start left to right, so we have our starting block here, and this simply has some input as text. This is usually going to be the chat message. You can also define some custom variables here as well, so that can be a string, number, boolean, object, or list. Our start then goes into the guardrails tool. Now this is a really cool one. This can actually do moderation checks, hallucination, jailbreak, and also personal information checks, and it is really customizable. You can see at the moment I have moderation and jailbreak turned on, and if you click the settings icon next to any of these, there's just so many options on what you might want to block or moderate. And if we go to jailbreak, you can see we can even choose the model that does the jailbreak checking, as well as the confidence threshold. In my case, I've just got this set up on the user's input. You could also have this set up on your model's output as well. With the guardrails, if it does fail the check, we go down to an agent down here. And this agent, again, is just super simple. All it is is it says, send the user a funny message that warns them not to try that again. And this is just using GPT 4.1. And then we simply end my workflow there. So this is basically just a chat message. If it passes though, this is where we go up to an agent that has to extract some information. In this case, I've given it the prompt to extract the GitHub repo name, the owner and the pull request from the chat history. You can see the most important part about this though is the output format. In here, we have text, JSON or widget, and we'll see that at the end. I've got this on JSON, and then we define the schema that we want. In here, you can see my schema is simply owner, repo, and pool number, where it's a string, string, and number respectively. Then we can give this a description so the AI understands what these values should be. The only thing I will note about this at the moment is this required button is just completely broken. If you untick some of these so they aren't required, it just breaks the entire workflow. I'm sure that's something that will be fixed in a few days, but it was very annoying to have to work that out. The other thing on this dialogue is we do have a generate button down here, which lets you type in the JSON schema that you want, and you can just get AI to build it out for you, or you can click advanced over here and see the actual JSON schema. So now that that step is giving us a structured output, this is where we run our if else check. This if else check here is simply checking if we do have PR information. So if I click into this, you can see the common expression language that I've used to make sure that we do have some information. We're checking if the owner is empty string, if the repo is an empty string, or if the pool number is zero. As I said, since I have to leave required tick, I can't just check for null here. If we don't have any information, again, pretty similar to the guardrail, I just send this to another agent that sends a text response that says we need a little bit more information, and then we end the workflow there. But if we do have the information, we send this to a transform data node. This is just a helper that lets you restructure outputs, and it's because in our next step for the MCP server, we need a specific input schema. 
If we click on the path between them, we can see what that is. If we go under target input schema, we need the owner to be a string, pool number to be a number, and repo to be a string as well. Now we are very close to having that. If we go back before this transform data node, you can see that the input into this was going to be output passed and then owner repo and pool number. So it's actually a nested object. So we simply need to use this transform step to unnest that data. You set up a schema in the same way that we saw before, but this way we're just mapping values. So if I change this to a select, we can choose some of the values that we have access to in my workflow. And in my case, I want to access the nested object that is on the output passed here. So I'm gonna map pool number to the pool number from that. And now our MCP server has the correct input. So we take a look at the MCP node. You can see I'm using the GitHub MCP server and I just provided this with a link and also my authentication key. In this case, we can choose all of the tools that we have on the GitHub MCP server. I'm just using the one to get the pull request diff. And then for require approval, I've set this to never as I don't want it to ask the user. I want this to be a completely automated step. Just to show you what the MCP server setup looks like, if I drag in a new node here and click on this, you can see we can click the add button. This takes you to the OpenAI created and maintained MCP servers then some third party approved ones. It was interesting to see Zapier here as a lot of people said this might be a Zapier killer. This does show they do wanna to work together. If you wanna add one outside of these lists, you just click on server here. You can add any MCP server that supports streamable HTTP. The only thing I will say about the MCP node at the moment is again, it seems to be completely broken or at least this GitHub MCP server does. It was working earlier and then at some point in the last hour, it just, it just won't work anymore. So I actually had to create a fake diff server that returns the diff that I already knew that we were getting back from the MCP server so I could show you this working in the demo. Seriously, maybe give these things a week so they can fix all of these early bugs. With our code diff retrieved from GitHub though, what we then do is turn it into a string with another transform data node and I pass this into my code review agent. Now this agent has a long prompt here that tells it to write a code review and then we also pass it the diff as a user here. As you can see, we can actually set up multiple instruction steps here. You can add as many of these as you like and choose between the user and assistant for however you want to configure your prompt. You can also click this button if again you want to get AI to write the prompt for you. Other cool things we have on this agent node is first the include chat history toggle. Now in my case I've turned this off. If you have this on it will count all user inputs and also any of the outputs from nodes that have come before this as part of the chat history. The reason I've turned this off is I don't want the diff from this MCP server here being combined with the one that I'm sending as the user prompt as I literally just want to control the prompt entirely myself so we don't fill up the context with anything that is not relevant to the code review. After this, we then also have tools on the agent itself. So you can see down here, I have the context seven MCP server connected. I have code best practices, which is actually a file search. So it's coming from my vector database within OpenAI. It is super simple to set up. Then I also allow this to have web search. We click the pass here. You can see some of the other tools that you're able to add. There's things like client tool, file search, code interpreter function, and also custom ones. So that's the code review agent. So the final step after the code review agent is to take the output that we get from the code review, add it into the prompt into this final agent. And this agent says, you're a meme selector, given a code review, generate a fitting meme. We can see down here that for the output format, we've actually selected widget. We can also click on the widget itself to get a preview of what this widget looks like and also the code that goes into it. This is just the JSON that defines the widget. But what's really cool, if we click this edit button here, you get taken to the widget builder. And in here, there's actually a tool to just use AI to build these widgets out for you. So if you click new widget, you can simply prompt this like one of those vibe coding tools and get a widget designed for the chat kit. It also has some example components. If we go over to the galleries, so you can see here some of the things that OpenAI think these will be used for flight information, calendar, buying things within ChatGPT, and just loads of other great use cases. It really does seem like OpenAI are going hard on adding apps into ChatGPT because we even have the apps SDK, which is a whole other video that I need to cover. For this video though, I'm just focusing on the agent builder and there are a few final cool things that we have in here. One of them is the evaluate up here. This shows you the traces for the last runs that this workflow did. So we can see the information and start to debug what may have gone wrong. We also have these graders. In the graders, we can give this a prompt, like did the agent perform a code review? Was the agent polite? Anything like that and hit enter. And this will run it against all your traces that are showing here. Once it's done, it will tell you whether it passed. So did all of them pass the criteria that you put in? And in my case, yes, they did. Finally, to actually integrate the agent in your own product, we can click this code button up here. One of the ways you can do this is with ChatKit, which is probably their preferred way, but there's also the agent's SDK. But unfortunately, this doesn't support agent workflows that have MCP nodes at the moment. So I'm hoping they do add that soon. We can also click the publish button up here. If you wanna take your draft changes and push them to the production API. So that's the overview of Agent Builder. And to be honest with you, I think NAN is safe, but it's not because Agent Builder is a bad product. I just don't think they're competing for the same thing. 
NAN has loads more features like non-MCP connections and integrations, it has shareable workflows, self-hosting, and most importantly, their flows don't always have to involve AI. The agent builder is primarily focused on working with OpenAI models. So to be honest with you, I think people are going to end up combining NAN and Zapier with the OpenAI agent builder to create even more powerful flows. The other really important thing as well is this is going to lock you into OpenAI's models. So if one day Anthropic have the best model, it's going to be way easier to switch that out if you use something like NAN versus the OpenAI agent builder. But what do you think? Do you like the new features that OpenAI is coming out with? Let me know in the comments down below what your use cases might be. While you're down there, subscribe. And as always, see you in the next one.